think for a minute about some time when you've really struggled in your life. It could have been the passing away of someone close to you or some great loss. Think about how all the other things that you normally resist just become meaningless. You don't, they're not important. So people can handle these big steps that we need to make them. They can handle them. They can absorb them into their lives. But if you present it to them, the idea will freak them out, but they will freak out over the small change. Because that's human nature. The conventional wisdom has always been that if you're going to make change, we need to start with baby steps. We need to lead people along not too fast so we don't scare them away. It's only with the heart that we can see rightly, right? We forget what is essential. We get mired down, as Exupery talks about, in matters of consequence. We get bogged down by our jobs and our, our schedules and the burdens of life and we forget to bring forth this energy into the world and to live up to our own expectations that we had. And the key is, is that we need to begin now. There is urgency. The problem many of us face is it's, it, it's tough. A lot of us give excuses to starting. We're not experienced enough or we're not the best speaker or whatever the issue is. There's all these excuses we give to standing up and take a leadership role. All of you are the leaders and all of you must lead in this new movement. I'm too busy, I don't know enough yet, etc., etc. Or I'm, I just have to get my idea perfect first. This is a killer. But I'm a big believer of the three-quarter baked philosophy. <laughs> don't wait till it's fully baked. Get your idea out when it's three-quarter baked, when it's thoughtful but not fully complete. Get it out. Get it out for people to respond to, to react to, to tell you what's not working and to help you make it better. When you do that, there's magic that happens. When you're willing to put yourself and your ideas, whether your stories are fully formed, magic starts to happen. We are not a movement that's figured all our shit out. Would you guys agree? <laughs> we are actually like the teenagers. Does anyone here have teenagers? Amen. Has anyone ever been a teenager here? <laughs> okay, you think you have everything figured out at times, <laughs> but you realize later that you don't, in fact, have everything figured out. But there's a lot of interesting things happening. You're beginning to come into yourself in some ways. You're beginning to develop an identity. You're beginning to develop sometimes a swagger, even though you have some, some anxieties. <laughs> But we're not grown up yet as a movement. And it's time for us to grow up. And this is like that moment when, when you graduate high school and you're about to leave your parents and you have that oh shit moment that, that mom and dad aren't going to be there to do your laundry for you. <laughs> this is not a time when we have the luxury to not communicate the truth. We know that we have to communicate these truths without shaming people, without pointing fingers, without pretending that we are so much better, that we are the righteous crowd, that we are the chosen people, right? That's gotten us into a little bit of trouble in other times in our history, has it not? <laughs> when we take that stance. There has to be, in speaking the, what we think to be the truth, the knowledge that we may be wrong first of all, that we may not, in fact, know the truth. That's a powerful thing to keep in mind. And to actually hope that, in fact, we are wrong. I hope that we're wrong about a lot of the stuff that we're talking about. I really do, right? And you should as well. This is the decisive decade, that this is the decade that we have to get things righted on the right course, that there is scant time left. What will our children's cities be like? I hope that they're socially just, culturally rich, and ecologically restorative. I hope that they are places of community and, and living. Visualizing a restorative civilization. It's time that we created our own visions of the future and started creating images together and sharing this much more broadly than we have before. And we would like to really push that. This is my little boy. <laughs> and I love this shirt. I blame my parents. And that's right. You know? And I do take it very personally. I wonder what kind of world 
my little boy who's really wonderful. I wonder what he's gonna get. He's gonna be 24 in 2030, right? And I don't want him living in Blade Runner. Do you?